Hey guys, welcome back to DCS World. I'm Spudknocker, as always. And because of the holidays, I've been away from DCS World for about two weeks now, and I've recently jumped back in, and I figured we should take a look at the new AGM65D and G Mavericks, uh, recently added to the open beta version of the F-18C Hornet. Now keep in mind, this is heavily work in progress, and things are liable to change. If they do change enough, I will definitely update this video and bring you guys a new version uh, in order to avoid any confusion in the future. Now, one thing I do want to address that I find very interesting, um, and it's something that has caused some confusion in the forums on uh, Hoggett, as well as on different various Facebook groups, is you do not um, warm up your Mavericks. You cool them down. A lot of people I see a lot of people referencing warming up their Mavericks, and that is very untrue, unfortunately. You want to cool down your Mavericks. The reason being is the um, friction of the air flowing over the seeker head of the missile obviously heats it up. It's a glass, pretty much like a sapphire glass that you would find on your um, iPhone camera, something of that nature, and. That glass heats up and doesn't allow the eyeball, so to speak, to see through that heat to measure the heat of the environment around it to find targets, whether it's an A9 Sidewinder looking for a jet or a Maverick looking for a tank. And so what we do is we use a bottle of argon gas or nitrogen gas, depending upon the model of the aircraft and the model of the missile, to cool down that seeker and allow it to see through that we didn't, it would be like looking at the sun or really light, bright light bulb and you get that kind of a light shadow on your eye that you can't really see through. It's kind of like clearing that up for the eyeball of the missile itself. So it's kind of an interesting little uh, sideshow here, but uh, we'll go ahead and get into the um, demonstration now. So we'll go ahead and go back to the F2 view before we get started. We'll take a look at the missiles we're carrying. And while we're at it, we'll go ahead and turn our, our, off our external lights. Um, looking at the missiles here, we've got two missiles on our F-18. We've got a green one and a white one. The inboard green missile is the older AGM-65D. The outboard white missile is the newer AGM-65G. Now in-game, the only difference you'll really notice is the D Maverick has a older seeker head, so you won't be able to zoom in as far. But while the G Maverick has a newer seeker head, allowing you to zoom in farther and launch that missile from farther ranges because you're able to acquire that target from farther. In real life, the D Maverick is a bit older than the G Maverick, um, and the D features a shape charge warhead blasting through that armor with a molten copper layer. The uh, G Maverick uses a kinetic penetrator, which is just blowing through that armor with sheer kinetic force from the explosive in there. So the G Maverick is going to have a larger warhead. The upcoming F Maverick that I believe is slated to come to the F-18C is kind of your dedicated um, anti-ship Maverick. Much larger warhead, much bigger kind of kinetic penetrator to get through the armor of a large warship and cause as much damage as possible. The upcoming F Maverick will have the same kind of seeker head as the one on the G, so you won't see much of a difference there. So we'll go ahead and hop on into the cockpit and we'll go ahead and get started. A wingman over here has got our back, so we'll go ahead and take her out of the radar, bring the EW page to our right, and we'll bring up our storage page on the left. And we'll go ahead and start the cooling process by going into air to ground mode. We'll select one of our Mavericks, we'll go ahead and select a D Maverick, doesn't really matter which one. And by selecting it, we start that cool down process. Looks like we got an inlet ice warning, so we'll go ahead and turn on our inlet warmer and if we go into our Maverick um, imaging display we can see a timer for the countdown of our cooling so that argon gas or that nitrogen gas is flowing through the wing or from the pylon into the missile and cooling down the glass of the seeker head there so that the eyeball of the missile so to speak and kind of see out and register the IR signature of the environment in front of it. We'll go ahead and also set up our navigation. Go 
up to waypoint two. Our target will be at waypoint two. And our target is the brand new and very cool little airport of Bandar al Jask. Uh, it's at before the mouth of the Strait of Hormuz, and it'll be a great little airport for launching, say, little harassment strikes against a Gonzo station out here. Or um, I can see a mission designer using this as like the Marines took it, took the little peninsula here, and now we can launch AV-8B or helicopter sorties out of here. It's a pretty small runway, so I don't think we'll be able to use much um, other than, say, a Harrier or helicopters out of here. But still a very, very cool uh, airport and very, very cool target uh, nonetheless. So while these guys are cooling down, we'll go ahead and start making a left-hand turn. Uh, Please note that this is just a demonstration here. We are not flying tactically. We would not be doing a lazy orbit right next to a target area with our Mavericks cooling down. Uh, if you're in multiplayer, you're hanging out with some friends, you're um, on a public server, you're with the wingman finders, you are, or you're pl playing a campaign mission, you're definitely going to want to cool down those Mavericks long before you get to your target area. You don't want to be with your pants down on the combat area without any uh, weapons ready to go, right? So with that in mind, we'll go ahead and tell our wingman to give us a little bit of space. Flight, go trail. <laughs> and something kind of cool that we can see there that gives us a little bit of the glimpse of the back end of the DCS world is we saw as our wingman was breaking away from us there, we saw his, uh, the fins of his Mavericks on his pylons actually disappeared. And that is simply because if we're really far from our wingman or we're really far from that missile flying through the air, we don't necessarily need to see those fins. So those fins kind of drop away in the rendering of the missile in order to kind of up our uh, performance by reducing the number of polygons that are rendered in the scene. So you can see we're almost ready to go. Mavericks are cooled, and on the runway at Al Josk, or Bundar E Josk over there, I keep wanting to call it Al Josk, is um, a couple of MI8s. Now those MI8s are cold and dark on the runway, so they're going to be a little bit on the more difficult side to lock up with the AGM-65Gs, simply because of the fact that they are um, cold and dark on the ramp. They haven't been started in a while. And then for the AGM-65Ds, we've got a couple of tanks running around the airfield that we'll go ahead and engage with those. So we'll bring this into the left DDI for the imaging page. We've got the FOV already zoomed in. We can zoom it out and zoom it in. Next thing we want to do before we roll in on our target here is get our TDC um, onto selected for our um, imaging page here. So what we're going to want to do is go left on our sensor select switch. And now we've got that little diamond there and that lets us know that yes indeed we have our TDC slewed to, sorry, slave to our um, Maverick page. And now we'll be able to slew the uh, sensor of the Maverick with our TDC. Go ahead and roll in on our target here. Gain a little bit of altitude so we can get a bit of, bit of a better angle. So we'll see if we can lock up these um, MI8s on the tarmac here. Because they're cold and dark, they have been a little bit hard to lock up in my practice runs of this uh, demonstration, but we'll see what we can do with them. And as you can see on our HUD there, we've got that little diamond. The point, sorry, not diamond, triangle. The point of that triangle pointing down is where our sensor is actually looking. So we can use that to kind of line up our shot before going into our uh, imaging DDI page and really trying to lock up that target. So it looks like we've got a good angle here. Lock up one of these helicopters. Looks like we got one, so rifle one. And we'll lock up, try and lock up the second one. Okay. 
and rifle two. So we'll go ahead and follow these guys in so that we can sort of find those tanks that are in the area. Oh, we can see them, two little dots for those tanks showed up. And we'll see where those missiles hit. Definitely looks like they're going for the, those helicopters there. Perfect. Boom. And boom. Oh, looks like it locked onto the hangar. But like I said, those helicopters are cold and dark on the ramp there. So they didn't present as much of a contrast in IR temperature. So it was harder for the uh, missile to lock on to those parked MI-8s. We should not have that issue with our... So we got some cool secondaries down there. So we should not have that issue with our AGM-65Ds going after those tanks. So we can see this pretty cool little new town and a pretty cool little airport here. Definitely a very nice little target for us, or a very nice little place to defend if you uh, prefer flying for the red side. So we'll go ahead and set our D Mavericks up. Our sensor select switch is already slaved to our left DDI. You can see with that diamond, so we're ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and gain a little bit more altitude in order to have a better angle on these targets. A little close, but we'll go ahead and roll in. If we need to make a second pass, we can do that. Rifle one, that was the back tank. And we'll go ahead and make a second pass for that second tank. We've got a little close there. And we can see our missile about to impact. And hit on that back tank. Now if this were a that missile. If this were a real life situation and we had people shooting at us and stuff, we'd be flying a lot more tactically, dropping flares, dropping chaff, all that good stuff. And so now we've got an asymmetrical loadout. We'll just kind of trim that out a little bit, make it a little bit easier for us. And we'll gain a little bit of altitude and come on in for that second tank. You can see the little fire from that first tank, so our second tank should be in that general area. So we got them locked up. I think that's the second tank. Yep. So we'll go ahead and fire our fourth rifle at that tank. And shack. And it looks like we've got some even more secondaries coming out of that hangar. That's pretty cool. We missed our target, but we got some cool effects out of it. That's all right. So I hope you guys enjoy the new uh, targets and airfields here on the Persian Gulf map, as well as have fun firing your Mavericks. So as always, guys, thank you for watching the video and please fly safe. And I'm going to go ahead and head on back to the carrier out on Gonzo Station. So, have fun, guys. And if you liked the video, please give me a like and a subscribe. Very much appreciate it. And that's it. Here goes our wing.